Hello, this is R4DS, and we are going to cover chapter 15 of Mastering Shiny, uh, Reactive Building Plots. I am Angel Felix, and I will be sharing here with the rest of my partners. So the learning objective today is understand the reactive values in Shiny, the reactive expression, and also the observations. Uh, we are also going to understand the low level function of self and insulate and how error and signal measures cover across the graph. So we, when we have an uh, error, how it reflects in Shiny, uh, and also how reality, how Shiny reality values are built in reference semantics. When we have a uh, reactive values, we have two ways to create them. We can use the reactive bar function. It just holds a single value. So you start with the definition, you say reactive value, and you define a number or any value, uh, any vector type. And, and then you, you can get the value using this, uh, like a function expression, and you can set a new value, uh, wrapping the new value inside of the parentheses. In the other hand, we have the reactive values is a list of reactive values. So you can uh, define a name and set more than one. You can get any of them using the R percent or also double brackets uh, syntax. And for setting a new value, you just need to, to use the equals or the minus or this sign, right? this kind of arrow expression that we use to assign values. Let's understand how in our normal R environment, the functions work. When you create a new object, let's see X1 with 10, and you copy that object into a new object, let's say X2, if you later modify the second object, to 20, for example, the original one won't change. That's as we expect in, in normal R because it's a copy of modifies a uh, framework. If we create a list, let's say with A and B with ones, and we create a function that take the list, modify the first element, to two and also return as invisible. If we pass the S across that function, we will see that yes, F changes, the A changes to two, but that's not the original object, it's a new object. If you see the, the original S without the function, you will see that it keeps the values. That behavior, doesn't happen in that way in China. When you create a reactive value and you copy to a new object, if you modify the first object, the second object also changes. So it's like, even though you have different names to the to the values, it's, the, it's like leaking the, to the same source of information. If you change one, and you will change the other one. If we want to, if we want to see that behavior also in R, uh, in always using Shiny, you can use RC pack to have object oriented programming. In this case, we are create, using RC to create a new class that is a list. And this is like a, object factory and now we are creating a new object from that factory it's like you are creating your own class and you are creating a the y class that is really a list and you are creating a list based on that class and you copy the object y1 to y2 and then you modify the value 
or a new object, for example, the, the V, and you get the values from the original one, you will see that even though you change the second, the, the first one also is changed. Uh, the same happened with the function. If you, I modified in the function, the value, the first value, also the second value get modified. That is the, the A. So, so you have to take in consideration that is the way that uh, the value way, it work. The first exercise of this session is what are the difference between the two least relative values? Compare the syntax. And they have this example, we have L1 with the reactive values. Also, they create a list of reactive value and also another reactive value. And also one of our prior partners in this book club created the, this extra example. What happens if you pass as a reactive bar a list, how it behaves? For getting the values, you can use the R, the dollar sign, or use the double brackets for the first one. For the L2, you need you you can use the dollar, but after that you you need to apply the parentheses. So even though you apply the brackets, you will need to to use the parentheses because you are, are using reactive bar inside of a list. So it's like the first step is to, to get the value from the list and then use the parentheses to get the reactive value from the reactive value expression. Do you get it? Or do you have any questions on that part? No, we're good. Okay. Right, let's continue. In this case, as this is a reactive bar, then you first need to use the parentheses to get the value. And then you are using the dollar sign to get from the list. And also the double brackets make the same to the to the percent sign. To the to the dollar sign. Um to setting values, you just need to use the arrow like, okay, I'm taking the from this value. And assign from this reactive value. And to the search option, you will need to set the value for all the elements. It's not a simple way to do it just for A. So, yeah, if you want to have a list syntax, yes, use reactive values. Don't, don't make this. Also, design up and perform a small example experiment to verify the reactive bar also has reference semantics. So if we start creating the edge and copy the S to Y and also create a different the C, if we change F with the number two, then the Y is also number two. But C keeps the same just as we saw before. What happened when we have an error in, inside of that reactive value? Well, the, the error is not like bumped directly, it's cached, it's saved, you know, inside of the reactive value. And just show when you, uh, retrieve the value, use extract the, to get the value. But if you also run uh, expect two seconds and run the, the code again, you will see that the time didn't change because it was cached. And you we are not expected to to take the, the mistake unless you know that uh, this expression would be a, a reality expression, something like that. But that, that's not the case. And how it propagate the error. Okay, now we know that the errors doesn't happen when you, when just is wrong. 
um, how it behaves uh, really changes if the error happens in the uh, output object or a server one. Uh, errors are propagated from the reactive graph uh, just as values, but they present different behavior when they reach up output. They are with displaying in the in the app. In out server, the, the error will cause the current session to terminate. This can be avoided by wrap, wrapping the code into a try function or try cast functions of, of base R. So let, let me run a really quick example. For example, this code is really simple. It's just a check. If the check is marked, then you will uh, show an error. Otherwise, it's just one. So but, uh, one, and I think they they uh, yeah they are adding some some part, but then it doesn't matter. The point is, right now we are showing three. If I check, yeah, you will see that in the output rather than a number, the error message. But the the the, the app keeps running. I can I I keep editing the the app. But in the observers, yeah, that that will grow. Uh, blow the, the app. So we will need to be really careful when we are using observers because it, uh, it, it will be a problem with the interaction for the user. I also could expect that uh, some app uh, ha uh, have some error, but to stop the, the whole app is not maybe a good thing to do. So we need to, to try uh, another perspective. Uh, head expression errors um sec that's to read to weigh the app if some errors is present in this function observer and apples we are told what they are doing but no other was fair by default it will cause the output to reset the initial back as a blank is state unless you 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 said the argument cancer output equals true. They preserve the current uh, display. So basically, if you want to avoid uh, showing some error, you remember the rep the rep function. Why it does is to to expect some input and and avoid running the next code unless you have that input. If we run that app, by just basically a history. You know, there is no error. There is no number, but there is no error because the rep uh, is a stop in the app. But if I write 500, you will see the histogram with, with that, from that sample number. If I, make a mistake by adding two minutes, then you will see a blank histogram. But if I cancel the output, uh, if I made this part, then the histogram keeps because the, the new argument we are talking, the cancel output true. Because what uh, let me check. Yeah, May, that that that's the point of, of of this argument. When I click the boss the the check box, I made through this argument. So, uh, the histogram keeps and doesn't show the error. So that's pretty really interesting. Uh, I think that. I wouldn't use this option for this implementation because I would like to know that for my user that just imagine that they write like this and they are watching the histogram. They will think that they're watching the correct histogram because there is no 
there's not any message to, to then explain that, ah, oh, we are, you are changing the app. What do you think about it? Yeah, that, that, that one's going to be tricky because uh, you get you can get confused, you know, with, yeah. the, with the histogram that is not changing. You know, when your output is changing and it's not valid. Exactly. Yeah, I, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will prefer, you know, that uh, message that this output is not valid or something. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give, give, give me, give me the right information. Not, not try to, you know, <laughs> not try to infer, <laughs> you know, that, that something is wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really picky to say, oh, there is no output. Yeah. Of course, it's a, it's a two negative number. No. <laughs> well. I know. Yeah. <laughs> And now that we understand how the reality values, you know, change, how they copy to each other, it's now to understand uh, when does no on exit work? Uh, on exit can be used inside function bodies, uh, test as expression, and also reality expression and observance. So yeah, that's why we are using, but it's important you to know that on a seat is a base hard function and it works also in, in, in this context. So now the thing, if you understand it, you can use it in many applications. It also, this behavior of on a seat inspired the with R package. That is also really useful when we are creating package, setting seats and things like that. For example, we have this reactive expression. Do something be based on these two values. Uh, but we all, we would like to have something like this. Ah, I think of this. Reactive like this. No, I don't. I don't even get it. It's the example for. But let's let's move on. When does on a still run? In function, in function, the code on and see runs after all the rest of the code have run. It runs even, even there are errors or warnings. So that that's really interesting. Uh, you can have multiple calls to on and see inside a function. Uh, use add on true. So a call doesn't override each other. We will see a more application right now. The application here, a set of our options. A good example, for example, a function, changing the number of digits or the, the default of the option of R, you can a, put it again as they were before your function. Uh, also can set an environment variable, change the working directory, we have find a directory, create a resource or extend a system. Basically, if your function is changing somehow the the, the environment, yeah, you, you should use it. For example, we have in a, a function, you are changing the number of digits that you want to print. And on exit, you are getting back the options because options, the the result of options is a list of with all the original fun, original values. And they said up three, are, are true because if you want to create more many calls, you can do it. Don't just pick the last one. If we run the the function, you will see that hey. I want to run just the the two significant values of of, of p. But if you just run p without wrapping into, inside the function, you will receive the number output that you usually have in R. Observers and output are terminal nodes in the reality graph. So we need to remember this, that uh, you see the outputs are here, 
and the observers uh, take place here. They usually are useful for, for message. And the reactive, like the string or the name, uh, are lazy, so, and cache it, so they don't change unless the observers and the outputs ask them to, to change. If we remember the our last chapter, uh, we, we need to understand that the reactivity starts from the output. It's like, oh, I'm invalidating the output, so I need to run all the, the, the reactive graph again to define it again. Let's see the, the observe event. Um, it's useful for saving a file to a shared network drive sending data to a web API, updating a database, printing a debug message in the console. The value returned by the observer is ignored because they are designed to work with functions called for the side effects. This is just a review that we saw in the, I think the third chapter because you don't, you don't usually do it. Yeah, that, that's why you use observe them. Hey, I, you want to print to the user, hey, there's a mistake or something like that, use observe them to, to those cases. In the other side, outputs, you are running like the inside of the server function. You say output and then you define the ID and you, then you 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 pass the, maybe the render function the output that you want to pass. Then they can detect when they are not visible, so they don't have to recompute. That's the the more important part between the the the, the real event and outputs that we have seen so far. Behind the scenes, also event is using uh, also the observe functions. Observe says a block of code that runs every time one of the reality values or expressions uh, uses is data. So basically, we we let's define this reality value, the y with them, and we create the observe function. Right now, we just have one reality value. So every time y is updated, then the observe function will, will print this message. And that, that's simple because they just create one, but maybe the observe function is more useful when you when you have more, <laughs> more, more values to take. Every time you run the observe function, it creates an action that can be uh, triggered. In the next sample, every time it changes, it creates another observer. So its value is printing another another time. Let's re repeat. We are creating a S reactive value. We are getting the value and also calling observe inside observe. And they say, hey, don't do that because you are making, you are doubling the process. So when you change the value, you will have two print two messages. When you update the value again, you will create two messages. So the 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 the, the point to remember here, yeah, don't call observe inside of observe. You should only either create server or output at the third level or your server function. But what happens if I want to use observe, but I don't want to observe, uh, to change and update the 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 to repeat the process for all values? Um, let's see if it's this, this example. The next call creates an infinite loop because the server will take a reactive dependency of apps and also in count. Let's start with these reactive values, count and apps. 
to you know to have a counter of how many times eggs have been updated. But what happens here? Every time eggs get updated or counts get updated, they'll serve wrong again. So if I change F counts we run, but what what happened with this line? Uh, counts will be updated again. So it will run again. And that, that's the problem. <laughs> the solution is to use is to insulate the R count uh, reactive value. So once we is wrap isolate then it won't take in consideration our count as a variable to to update to run this code again. So I updating this code. Uh, yeah, it, it should show a three. I don't know why why it's no I'm not getting that, but it doesn't matter. The the point is that here we should have a three, a two. Here I should have a tree. I, I will need to check that in my in my I'm an output. But in the sample that 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 the other showcase that they have. But if for example we want to isolate many values, then that's the case that we want to use insulate event because we just want to run this code when this value gets updated. No, it doesn't matter what happens inside of this part. And this count should be four. The same logic happens to event reactive. It basically just tracking the chains of the, the expression, the first expression, and then insulating the second part. Outside event and event reactive also have several default that we can change and they really discuss it here. So in non null uh, equals to force, you change that you change that argument to that value to also handle null values rather than ignoring any event that is null. So you you in your value, for example, the event gets null, and you want to continue your code. Uh, yeah, you need to to set to false here. Uh, ignore initial to to avoid running the functions. Uh, the function once when you create them, it's like when you run the shiny app first time and uh, shiny will run everything but you don't want that insolent event or reactive event runs at that time you can you can also set to do that also if you want that your your event or the reactive only runs once then also you can you can set that to true and it basically you run once even though the the reality values related change over. And let's run uh, this exercise. Uh, and they ask complete the app below with a server function that updates out with a value S only when the button is pressed. So we have a simple, we have a numeric input value uh, in 50, uh, an action button to capture the value and also an app. To make, uh, to solve the problem, to just show when we press, we use the reality event. So every time we capture them, uh, I'm showing the input Ads and save it as a reactive value. And then we just need to render the test. And here is the app. So we have, for example, 500. I capture 
we have 20, I can capture, and only capture just when I click over capture. Uh, just to review and remember of remember of shutter tree, we use reactive timer to date the reactive expressions based on so, uh, some time. It's like, hey, I have I have every half second to to update these these expressions. So they add timer here to to date the graph every uh, based on that time. But Shiny also have a different functions uh, that we call invalidate later. That is most uh, is more flexible. Uh, how it works after the ms milliseconds, it causes any reactive consumer to be invalidated. Uh, basically, they, they need to create the reactive graph again. They also for creating animations and connecting to data sources out of shiny reactive frame. Um, let's see how it works. For example, if we want to create a thing random, fresh random, uh, no, normal every half second, we can create this. So you will have a 10 random numbers every half second. Uh, also, we can create a, a cumulative sum. If we create, we start the zoom. This is not the, the zoom function. This is the zoom reactive value. And we set to uh, 300 and my seconds, my seconds. Then you can grab insulate sum and add uh, some number to update. You know, remember that this part is update the zoom value. And then so you will you will have an increasing number. If you see this, this function like run every forever, especially if you observe one, but we have some few cases. Uh, if we want to update a, a data frame important, use directly the function, use later, invalidate later. Uh, it won't be a useful idea, well, a very good idea because you will be importing the, your data every second, every five seconds, so you don't want that. What you want to do is to, uh, every time the the data gets updated, maybe the file time is a good indicator. Then you will read the file. That's, uh, and you will make the check every second, for example. That's the reactive pool function help us. So every 100 seconds, it will check the file day. If he see, see a, some change, then it will import the data in your, to your data reactive expression. As this example is really simple, we also have the reactive file reader. So you don't need to create your own function, but this function are really useful if you are working with SQL, for example, if you are maybe testing the number of rows that your database have, and you say, hey, number of rows in your in your query, if the number has changed, then you you import the the, the, the data from your database. So this is a more general function, and this is for just local files. Long running reactives. In the next code, we are activating, in, invalidating the result before ending a long process with ends in an infinity invalidation loop. So we are having a reactive expression that runs every half second, but the process takes one second. And here we are just taking 10 as an output for this example. And that's a problem because before ending the process, you will be asking for running the process again. 
you know, that's bad. But we could do is to do on acid. Why? Because it won't run this comb until you complete the process. And now you know that every your code will run every second and a half, basically. For time and accuracy, it's important to understand that in Bailer is a polite request and not a demand. Uh, if you are running a different shiny process when it's time to update, uh, then it won't run. So the invalidation might take longer than you expect. And yeah, that, that basically the chapter. I don't have you have any doubt. It was a really long chapter in my opinion, but you know you want to to go back to any session. But the invalidate later really likes this function with the honest well. Uh, Angel, I just have a comment, and I think we have to uh, check what happened to that. You know, uh, isolate uh, the RS count that for some reason it was staying in the same the same value. Ah, uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, because I, I was checking also the 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 the, the notes in the in the you know in the book club and apparently you know it, it it the syntax is correct so sometimes something's happening there no you know maybe that's because we are we are not running inside a shiny app oh maybe, okay you know okay. maybe that's because we are using yours right uh, the option i mean i can find the yeah the reality console mm -hmm. okay I'm thinking that it's more related to that part. Yeah. Because it's that like, you see, it's like it's like the in this situation, it's like the observer is not running, basically. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's not running at all because it's, it's always showing the zero because it was the original value. It's like right. uh, I think it's the limitation. So when mm -hmm. I made a pull request, I will I, I, I will just print and, and copy the value. You don't know. I, I, um, yeah, I think the syntax is correct. Uh, okay. That's because it's the 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 problem because I was trying to to run most of the code I could, but it, it's mm -hmm. also important that we understand that limitation. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Well, guys, I think we are done with this. Uh, I hope to see you after the, the break. So I will stop.